Coming tonight to the Blackhawk School District Board of School Directors voting session for September 17th, 2019. If we could have everybody rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Mark Breaker. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, Mr. Battaglia. Here. Mrs. Gary. Here. Mr. Hackerthorne. Here. Mrs. Halson. Here. Mr. Jones. Present. Dr. McCosey. Here. Mr. Morrison. Here. Mr. Schaefer. Here. Mrs. Ziegler. Here. And our student rep, Ms. Yala. Here. You got nine of nine, sir. Thank you. The purpose of videotaping a meeting is for public information. The opinions expressed by any member of the public do not necessarily reflect the view or opinion of the Blackhawk School District Board of School Directors and are solely that of the speaker. The Blackhawk School District Board of School Directors hereby expressly disclaims any and all responsibility or liability for any false, defamatory, or slanderous statements expressed by the speaker. Any unauthorized rebroadcasting of any video, audio, or still image of the video recording of the meeting is strictly forbidden without the written permission of the Blackhawk School District Board of School Directors. Uh, there was not an executive session held prior to tonight's uh, meeting. Um, we'll move on to 1.6, which is the approval of the agenda and amendments. There were two, or we'll say three plus items added the first two are under the personnel committee. Its approval is recommended for the following substitutes. Uh, Genevieve Lynchak, a nurse. And then approval is recommended to accept the resignation of Dana Cummings, cafeteria worker, effective September 30th, 2019. And then under education committee, um, there were four field trips added. So if I can, do I have a motion to approve the changes to the agenda? Certainly. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Do I have a second? Okay. Thank you, Mr. Battaglia. Should we just all in favor or roll call? You can roll. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right, we'll move on. Uh, public relations and communications, Mrs. Ziegler. Blackhawk is very proud of our students' achievements, and we encourage the extracurricular activities that happen in each grade. Please visit each school's website for updates and happenings in our building. Item 2.1, congratulations to Jack Albaugh for being selected September Student of the Month by the Rotary Club. All right, thank you. The public has the opportunity to address the board at this time on agenda items. I know at the last meeting we kind of switched around a little bit, but if there are any comments on Northwestern, since it's not an agenda item, we'll just ask for you to stop or hold any kind of comments till the end of the meeting. Would it? Nope. So we're not going to make a motion this time to allow Northwestern comments in the beginning? No, we're going to just do it at the end. We're going to follow the normal agenda. It should be quick. It should be quick. We're going to just go through the voting section. We had the majority of the discussion at the last meeting. So I would expect it to be, uh, you know, fairly quick to get to that okay, point. Okay, because we have parents here who intend to speak who can't stay too late. So I just want to make that point that they get to speak. Okay. Okay. Anyone else from the public on any agenda items? All right, moving on. We have a presentation by Eccles Architecture regarding the required projects based on the refunding portion of the bond refinancing with uh, possible work to include high school entry, high school elevator, uh, elevator issues, and other appropriate infrastructure updates. Mr. Spazio. Good evening. Um, I gave uh, Dr. Posterpak uh, a little handout here for the board. Uh, I'm gonna review this quickly. Uh, he had asked me uh, to put this together uh, as a way of just walking through the timeline. Uh, we had a conference call uh, a week or so ago uh, with your bond council and your um, financial advisor. Um, you intend to refinance bonds. Uh, that refinancing will result in uh, proceeds from the refinancing of about $790,000, um, which can be used for capital projects. 
Um, the anticipated uh, refinancing is uh, scheduled for at the end of this month. Um, the proceeds will be available shortly after that. Um, by law, 5% of the proceeds have to be spent within six months of refinancing. Uh, for th that amount, we're looking at approximately $39,600. Um, and I believe 85% of the proceeds have to be spent within three years of the refinancing. Um, the proposed projects that would be funded with this refinancing were considered as part of the uh, Community Advisory Committee study, and they are focused on the high school. Uh, we'll be developing a secure entrance, uh, relocating and altering the office. Um, we've estimated that in the study have a range between 750 and a million dollars, 750,000 and a million. Uh, so that would be the first project. Um, some elevator upgrades, uh, which are estimated in cost between 60 to 80,000. Um, there's also a, an idea of uh, either applying security film um, to the existing glass uh, on the building, which would prohibit uh, someone from breaking out the glass it would essentially hold the glass in the frame and be a deterrent to uh, detain or slow down an intruder. Um, as an alternate to that, I suggest that you all look at just replacing the glass with new laminated glass and then choose which option is more, most economical. And then uh, if there's some additional money available, uh, if these estimates are conservative, there may be some other capital projects that the board directs. Um, our uh, proposal for architectural and engineering fees for the renovation work uh, associated with the office and the secure entrance would be 7% um, of the construction cost. Uh, that was the same as we quoted for uh, the, the Northwestern project when we uh, had a contract for that. Um, we were also asked to put together a, a price for full-time project representation this would be to put an employee on site during construction 40 hours a week. Uh, and so we have a proposal uh, for that of 4% of, of, of construction cost. Um, the AE fee, based on the estimates uh, for the design and bidding of the bidding documents, uh, would be uh, able to be spent in the next six months. And that would cover that requirement to spend the 5%. Um, so the timeline we're looking at uh, is the start, October 1st. Um, we have about six months to design the, the project to prepare bidding documents, um, and then uh, a month of bidding in April of 2020, a month for the board to analyze bids and award contracts that would be May of this coming year, and then three months of construction, June, July, August, um, with a project closeout in September of 2020. Um, so your next steps would be for uh, authorize us to put together an agreement uh, that you might approve um, to uh, engage us to begin the design, uh, to continue with closing on the refinancing, and then uh, if you choose to move forward, we would schedule a kickoff meeting and begin the design with the administration. Are there any questions on that timeline or those, any of those tasks? I, I guess I have one, and, and you might not be able to answer this. It might be thought the cost effective answers. Under the proposed AE fees for the project, the optional full time project representation, is that more of an owner's rep or is that more of a project manager, that role? I normally ask for uh, projects of this size. It's not that it's overly large or scope and sequence. Um, the architect to provide that because I think they can manage the contractors. If you were talking more of a large scale system, I would say we would have an owner's rep. Okay. In this case, it would be coming out of the Eccles firm. So this is more of a project? This is a project manager for okay. Eccles, correct. Because right. I don't believe the scope of this is so large that an owner's rep would be warranted. For example, if it were uh, a massive, you know, building upgrade, yeah. uh, you know, project, you may want an owner's rep to meet, mediate between the architect and the 
contractors. Okay. But in this case, I don't. Th this would be, uh, uh, you know, construction. Uh, Correct. Just this construction, person with construction experience that would be on site 40 hours a week and would be an interface basically doing uh, liaison between the district and the architect and the contractors. And, and if I can also add, we would want somebody, because we're talking a timeline of three months, they need to hold uh, the contractors to the timeline. And that needs to be somebody who's constantly with that group of people making sure they meet those deadlines because we have to open school. Yeah. And we do not want to delay that process because somebody didn't meet a deadline. And that's why I would ask that we work with somebody who can, you know, legitimately evaluate that work and report to us. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Any other? Yeah. How reasonable is it to get um, some cost estimates for us in the next month? Because just reading this offhand, it seems like we're going to blow through that seven hundred ninety thousand dollars proceeds in no time. We can't hear you. Well, the question was how uh, reasonable is it for us to revisit these, these prices once we actually start design. And as part of our schematic design phase services, uh, we would uh, work with the administration and the board to create an architectural program. That would be the list of goals and objectives you have for the office relocation. Um, and that might entail less work than what was anticipated in the study or more but uh, in conjunction with once we get a design that is agreeable to the district we would prepare a, an estimate at that phase and you would know then uh, what the design uh, you know a better handle on what the costs are um, these costs that were part of the study were developed from um, rule of thumb cost per square foot and there was actually no design done we looked at the area that would be altered uh, we have experience to know that you can look at between 150 and 200 dollars a square foot uh, historically and that's how we arrived at that uh, once we actually start designing we will know uh, where you know what walls what mechanical systems are affected and so that price can be more fine-tuned well, regardless, it seems like we're going to go beyond the seven hundred ninety thousand dollars of proceeds. So I'm asking, are you anticipating borrowing a bunch of money? I I don't. I anticipate doing what the district directs me to do. Uh, I don't know. Well, right here it says okay, seven hundred fifty to uh, one million just for the secure entrance. You have seven hundred ninety thousand in proceeds. Okay. You had the right. elevator estimate, you got 80,000, you've already gone over that 790. So I'm asking again, are you planning on borrowing money? No, I don't, I'd say at this point in time, no, there is no plan to borrow money. I think if we were, you know, depending on it, it would come out of the capital or the general fund? Capital, capital fund. Our capital, capital fund funds. right now has, we, last year we assigned that. There's, there's 700 and some thousand already in that. <coughs> On the, if you look at the, if, if you look at your audit, you'll see there's 700. Well, so, so basically, based on the based on the money that we'll receive from the refinancing and closing, and then the money that's in the capital fund, you know, that's where the board will decide. You know, that will we'll come to us, and then we can say, hey, we'll do all of this. We only want to do this one project. So that's what the discussion will be once we get those proposals back. <coughs> Any uh, any other questions at this time for Mr. Esposito? Well, one of the things that I guess has been on my mind. I was thinking I wouldn't bring it up, but I just I don't know if this is the time to bring it up or not. Because um, most of these upgrades look like they're um, safety related, which is great because we need to upgrade our um, schools for safety. Um, I was thinking during the CAC, one of the things that we've looked at is this room that we're in. Um, obviously, it wouldn't be something that would be, be, we would be doing now, but sometime in the future. I'm just curious, like if you look around, this auditorium, seats are broken, the rug is, you know, things could be redone in here. We just redid the stage, we just had it repainted. 
Is that something that we could include? Just you know, <coughs> what would it would cost to you know do some maybe minor upgrades, just so we know what we're looking at even in the future. Is that something that we could consider at this time too? Would that be done through? I, that, uh, <coughs> we, I believe. Um, I'm speaking, Dave. I'm not going to speak for you, but I believe when we had spoken before. The documents put together can indicate the required doc, uh, portion of the captured entrance for the high school. We discussed the um, accessibility of the elevator and its need to be very reliable. And then finally, if we were talking about upgrades to the windows to make them more secure, what might that cost? And other projects that the board would identify to examine. Is that correct? And then the board could determine what those other projects would be. Because the refunding portion describes the captured entrance. Mm -hmm. It doesn't describe what to do other than other upgrades as appropriate for the high school. Okay, so that leads you some You could identify okay. another Le project if you leeway to decide what to do beyond uh, in improving security. Um, if you had enough funds at, on hand and had the desire to spend them, you could add work in the auditorium. Um, if you look at the uh, community advisory study, there's a section under the mid-term uh, probable cost estimates for the high school. There's a whole section on uh, the auditorium, and it talks about individual components such as the seating, uh, the theatrical lighting, uh, ADA accessibility, uh, a sound reinforcement system, and there's a price determined for each of those components. You could do some of them, all of them, none of them, uh, depending on what funds were available. So you're saying in the document, if the board would so choose to identify what might upgrades to this facility we're sitting in now be, you could provide some estimates based upon that document. Yes, I mean that would be a place to start, and then if you decide you want more information on that, uh, or you know more accurate um, actual, you know come up with a design for the replacement of these components, those could be those estimates could be more fine tuned or tailored to what you're proposing to do. Okay. Okay. I think thanks. I just been, I've been thinking about that. This whole area really has been neglected and um, it's one of the largest probably use, use used facilities in our district with all the concerts and things that happen here so thank you for um, enlightening us in that. Any other questions? Yes, well Dave, um, when you submit uh, ideas, plans, the captured entrance, is it going to be just one basic one or more than one with some little options if we Way we, go. we would suggest some solution to start based on the program, but we're certainly willing to, uh, if, if we miss the mark at the first try, it will be a reiteration of it and maybe another. Uh, we'll work till that design is satisfactory to the district's needs. So there, there, may, be, there may be different solutions that have different price points. Um, I'm hoping that if you could find a, a more economical way to do this so that was still uh, satisfied your needs, um, we'd certainly be willing to work to that end. Um, but we haven't, you know, really started to design anything, and we haven't really sat down with the administration to talk about ideas and needs the administration sees for that. Uh, you know your operations better than we do, so. We need to communicate and collaborate on that so we can come up with some options for you. Um, did I hear you say, I, I thought I heard this, um, that with the captured entrance it would be a reconfiguration of the school office? Is that, did I hear you say that? I, I believe that was the thought was that we'd make alterations to the office so that okay. it uh, w could have a, an exterior exposure so that the office could see people approaching, you know, the secure vestibule would be uh, located in a way that you could uh, only enter the office without entering the school during school hours when 
the main doors, your exits were locked down. Okay, thank you. All right, any other questions? All right, thank you. Thank you. All right, we'll move on to Finance Committee. Dr. Mikosi. Very well, Dr. Mm -hmm. Approval is recommended for items 3.1 through 3.4. 3.1, approval is recommended for the financial report for August. 3.2, approval is recommended for today of the bills. Fund 10, general fund, 71,156 and six cents for 1819 school year, 377,676 and 98 cents for 1920. Fund 32, Capital Projects Fund, $17,544, bag zero. Fund 51, Cafeteria Fund, $13,431 and 48 cents. Fund 66 is the Health Fund, payroll for August, $1,103,212 and 55 cents. 3.3, approval is recommended for the athletic activity account. 3.4, approval is recommended for the sale of property identified as tax parcel number 57033-0101.000 for the repository of unsold property to Sherman Hostetler for the balance and other fees. You so move? Thank you. I have a second? A second. Thank you, Mr. Morrison. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Mr. Hackathorn? Yes. Mrs. Helson? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Dr. Mikosi? Yes. Mr. Morrison? Yes. Mr. Schaefer? Yes. Mrs. Ziegler? Yes. Mr. Battaglia? Yes. Mrs. Garrett? Yes. The motion passes. Thank you. Um, just so we know, going forward, if you want, you can just read the, you know, the approval is recommended for that section. We don't need to reread all the items that we talked about last week. Thank you. Um, so we'll move on. Personnel Committee, Mrs. Gary. Approval is recommended for the items 4.1 through 4.5. I so move. Thank you. Can I have a second, please? I'll second. Thank you, Mr. Morrison. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Dr. Mikosa? Yes. Mr. Morrison? Yes. Mr. Schaefer? Yes. Mrs. Ziegler? Yes. Mr. Battaglia? Yes. Mrs. Gehring? Yes. Mr. Hackathon? Yes. Mrs. Helsing? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Motion passed. <laughs> Thank you. Education Committee, Mrs. Ziegler? Approval is recommended for items 5.1 through 5.4. I so move. Thank you. Do I have a second? Thank you, Mr. Jones. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Mr. Morrison? Yes. Mr. Schaefer? Yes. Mrs. Ziegler? Yes. Mr. Battaglia? Yes. Mrs. Gehring? Yes. Mr. Hackathorn? Yes. Mrs. Helsing? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Dr. Mikosi? Yes. And 5 2 through 5 4, no, and 5 1. The motion passes. Thank you. Uh, buildings, ground, building and grounds, real estate, Mrs. Garen? No report. Um, Thank you. Excuse me, one second. Could we, could we make sure this goes on the website? Um, the, yes. The okay. Yes. 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 Thank you. Absolutely. All right, Athletics Committee, Mr. Jones. Approval is recommended for item 7.1, I so move. Thank you, do I have a second? Mr. Battaglia, thank you. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Mr. Schaefer. Yes. Mrs. Ziegler. Yes. Mr. Battaglia. Yes. Mrs. Gary. Yes. Mr. Hackathon. Yes. Mrs. Helsing. Yes. Mr. Jones. Yes. Dr. McCuzzi. Yes. And Mr. Morrison. Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Administrative liaison, Mr. Morrison. No report. Thank you. Transportation Committee, Mr. Battaglia. Approval is recommended for items 9.1 and 9.2. I so move. Thank you. Do I have a second? Mr. Jones, thank you. Any discussion? <coughs> Roll call, please. Mrs. Ziegler. Yes. Mr. Battaglia. Yes. Mrs. Gary. Yes. Mr. Hackathorn. Yes. Mrs. Helson. Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Dr. Mikosa? Yes. <clears throat> Mr. Morrison? Yes. Mr. Schaefer? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Food Service Committee, Mr. Jones? No report. Thank you. Nego Negotiations Committee, Mr. Morrison? No report. Thank you. Policy Committee, Mrs. Ziegler? Uh, yes. Uh, this is the second reading of the following amended policies. A, 
210.1, B351, C451, and D551. Please see last week's um, uh, backup. Yes. Um, I just want to tell the public that this is uh, some medicinal marijuana policies for our students and for our employees um, that the administration felt that we needed to update this time. So um, that is what we're doing. Thank you. Thank you. Board staff enrichment, Mr. Jones. Approval is recommended for item 13.1. You said move? I so move. Thank you. Do I have a second, please? I'll second. Thank you, Mr. Morrison. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Mr. Battaglia. Yes. Mrs. Gary. Yes. Mr. Hackerthorn. Yes. Mrs. Helson. Yes. Mr. Jones. Yes. Dr. Mikosi. No. Mr. Morrison. Yes. Mr. Schaefer. Yes. Mrs. Ziegler. Yes. A motion carries. Thank you. Beaver County Career and Technology, Mr. Jones. No report. Thank you. Intermediate Unit, Mr. Jones. No report. Thank you. PSBA Legislative Committee, Mrs. Ziegler. Just keep watching the Charter School Initiative, and there's been um, some discussion um, at Harrisburg uh, starting up, so pay attention to that. All right, thank, thank you very you. much. And we'll move on to additional business. Um, any visitors? And we'll ask if you kind of have somewhere to be. Come up first. <gasps> Hello. Hello. Abby Seymour, West Mayfield. I wanted to keep this as informal as possible. I'm not here to deliver statistics or a fancy speech. I simply want to share two personal experiences regarding Northwestern. My son, Caden, attended Northwestern through kindergarten. The years would have been 2015 to 2016. He was sick a majority of this year. Please understand, even though he was sick, he was not sickly. He was a normal little boy. He ran, played, danced, laughed, and carried on, like any little boy should. During the course of this year, Caden was diagnosed with multiple illnesses, including adenoviruses, noroviruses, upper respiratory infections, and influenza. This is just to name a few. There were days that he would get off the bus and throw up, or take an after school nap and wake up with a random fever. This did not make sense to me, and it did not make sense to my husband. We were actually starting to blame our home. Um, looking at him, he had very dark circles around his eyes. So we knew that it was probably all allergy related, but we didn't know where it was coming from. Um, we had our air ducts cleaned. I bought him an air purifier. We ran a pool mist humidifier 24 seven in his room. I used to walk around my home and spray my floors and walls with bleach water. Um, I washed his clothes and dressed. I sprayed our furnace motors with Bactrivan daily and changed them every three weeks. Nothing was helping. As a parent, your mind goes to the darkest place. Is there something more going on? Is there a bigger picture? Do we need to see a specialist? We decided to take him to an allergy doctor. They performed a skin prick test, which determined that he was allergic to ash tree, goldenrod, and mold. His doctor suggested that I start a log. Once I started a log of his illnesses, I began to notice the pattern. On weekends, he was fine. On holiday breaks, he was fine. On random school days, he was not. A few months later, the potential health issues at Northwestern came to light. It all made sense. My six-year-old perfect little boy was getting sick from his school. I attended every board meeting relating to Northwestern. I asked Dr. Kerber and the board to shut down the school immediately. This did not happen, and my son had to continue to finish out the school year sick. Do you know what that feels like as a mother? Sending your six-year-old into a building that you knew was making him sick and not being able to do anything about it. The second issue I want to talk about at Northwestern was safety. Caden plays football for the Blackhawk Little Cougars. His very first year was that same year, and it was spent on the feces-covered field at Northwestern. It was October of 2015. We were playing Stow Rocks. Stow Rocks beat us. They beat us pretty bad, actually. 
There was an unruly Stone Rocks parent on our side of the field. They were acting out, yelling obscenities, and being downright belligerent. There were children present, so a Blackhawk parent had asked the Stone Rock parent to please stop swearing and to leave the field. The issue escalated and looked as if it was going to turn physical. Because of this, the police were called. 25 minutes later, the state police showed up. 25 minutes. We were in a wide open rural space with a couple hundred people, many of them being children. What if this parent would have had a weapon? A 25 minute response time would have been catastrophic. Board, I am asking you as a parent and as a resident of the Black Hawk community to please, please, please keep Northwestern closed permanently. The health and safety of our children and staff are priceless. There is no grant out there, regardless of dollar amount, that can compensate for their well-being. In turn, I would like to share with you a picture of Caden. This is my son, and this is from his kindergarten year. And I just would like to show you all what I saw more often than not when this child got off the bus. May I bring it up to you? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. How has he been since? He's fine. He's in fourth grade now. He's at this. I invite any of you to, <laughs> to meet him. He's amazing and he is perfectly healthy. Do we have any other visitors that would like to address the board at this time? My name is Melissa Green, South Beaver Township. As I stated in the last meeting, I have three children currently enrolled in the district. I would like to ask the board for an assurance that the permanent closing of Northwestern will be on the agenda at the next meeting, October 8th, 2019, for discussion and on the October 15th, 2019 agenda for board vote. According to my calculations, 90 days from the public hearing is October 7th, 2019. Therefore, adding it to the agenda for October 15th with a vote October, I'm sorry, adding it to the agenda the 8th with a vote on the 15th puts us well within our 90 days. Mr. Yes, Schaefer. it will be on the agenda. 100%. Yes. Finally, I would like to present these 10 letters from other families in the district who also feel that Northwestern should be permanent clo permanently closed but were unable to be here today. The letters contain their email addresses so that you can reach out to them with any questions that you may have. I am also giving you a copy of my speech from the last sept meeting, September 10th, to remind you and reiterate why the building needs closed permanently and properly. May I give you my letters? Sure, thank you. Right. Any other visitors? <laughs> My name is Dave Sutton, forty-five <coughs> year resident, taxpayer, parent, and grandparent of kids that went through. Blackhawk School. All of them went through uh, Northwest School. Maybe we were just lucky. I don't know. But none of our none of our children had any of the symptoms. That, and, and I feel bad for anybody whose child did have that, does have that, or does have that problem from Northwest. We were just lucky, I guess. But also, there are hundreds of other students that could probably come before this uh, panel and and say that they had no ill effects from going to Northwest School. And we went uh, uh, football games, basketball games, everything at Northwest, and, and luckily we came on with, with, with uh, no, no problems. The only thing I wanted to present was some information I had about a mold study that was done 
at Northwest in February of 2016. And the sampling came with everything. This is mold only, with all the numbers very low. And the, and the people who did this said, as you can see, this four count is just measurable in some cases and easily passes a, a normal fungal ecology condition one. This is a very clean building, and especially the classrooms I sample. In 2018, Biz had a mold study done, and room A202 was well over a thousand. And during the Christmas holidays at Biz, there was a mold, some work done to get rid of the mold in Biz, but nobody's talking about that. Also, the ECHO study on Biz, which some everyone is so enamored with. Last renovation was 1994, building dates to the 1930s, odd floor plan, difficult to design out, undesirable building issues, does not allow easy use by persons with physical limitations, total high vac replacement needed, building envelope leaks air and water, Windows need replaced and reduced in number, leaking pipe insulation, design issues for security, inefficient lighting, antiquated technology wiring, no real gymnasium, lots of steps and confusing to navigate, not cone compliant railings and stairwells, inefficient windows, no captured entrance, and old emergency generator transfer switch. And the only problems with Northwest had to do with uh, the water and sewage, which is which was all addressed through PlanCon. Uh, that money was there, but was used for other things. I think that if the money had been used for that, you'd have a good school, a modern school right now. And uh, again, they're just uh, like I said. It's, I feel sorry for folks that had sick children there, but I wonder whether it was Northwest Air or Southwest Pennsylvania Air, which is known to have poor, poor air in this part of the country. I think the root cause for most people wanting to close Northwestern is the teachers. I think that came out clearly in the last couple of me board meetings. I'm sorry, I missed what, what was the... I said, I, I believe the, the cause of, of, the biggest cause of wanting to close Northwest is the teachers. Oh. They'd like to be all together in biz. Okay, I'm sorry, I just didn't hear what you okay. said. And, and I, item two, in all my time here, I have never seen a school district as torn apart as this one is right now. The, the whole community is fractured. In years gone by, nobody ever heard of Region 1, 2, 3, Patterson. It was Blackhawk. And I think at this point in time, people are pitting one region against the other for one reason or another. In 1980, we had 4,000 students. Now we're down to 2,400 students. We've got a huge debt. You've got projection for 70 students in the next 10 years in, in, this, in this school district. I think this, this board really needs to table all the actions regarding future building until complete testing has been done of all the buildings in the school district to see for, for mold, asbestos, radon, the whole works to see where we are. Until that time, you know, million dollars are, 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 are going to be spent on a lot of opinion rather than fact. This board needs to step back and assess what their actions are doing to this community. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. My name is Sue Albiani. I'm a taxpayer and I'm a teacher in the district. 
I taught at Northwestern for 11 years. And I taught with many teachers who are in the audience who have suffered many illnesses. And if you do want facts, I have a paper right here from the Radon Detection and Control. My PE office had an 8.5 radon level. The nurse's office had a 5.0 radon level. Room 109 had a 6.6 .6 radon level. My office that I sat in for 11 years with no windows, and when they tell you, and you've heard it, that windows were open for testing, there's many people that do have proof of that. Um, you couldn't open my windows because I had no windows. They did put a radon mitigation system in my office. So if you want facts, there is a radon mitigation system in my PE office that I sat in for 11 years. But I sat in it for 10 years without it. Anything over four is dangerous. And after talking with the gentleman who came in to do this, he said to me, I'm sorry. Because that's all he could say, what can you say? When you talk about mold, I have the same reports. I have a stack of reports. I didn't bring them tonight. But I do have the same one he was just reading. But I have many, 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 many reports about the mold. My gym was closed down for many months. And I taught gym in a classroom. The same classroom that was beside my PE office that the Head Start teacher has passed away from lung cancer. That same classroom that another teacher at the age of 58 had also taught in that classroom has died from cancer. We also have teachers sitting in this audience has taught in that classroom. How do you think we feel? But my gym was closed down and they brought in air purifiers and they brought in scrubbers to help get the mold, the moisture, and the levels, levels out. Some of the storage areas um, where we stored equipment and the kids were in those areas, uh, they tore out the flooring, they tore out the ceiling. So if you want facts, I have the facts. I have a whole stack of them. Kids complain daily of headaches. They did have dark circles. Teachers, teachers that left the school and went to different schools all of a sudden were better. We're not making it up. We're not just wanting to be in one district or one school building. When the Workers would go under the tunnel because we had leaks upon leaks upon leaks. And they would come out because it was in my gym. They were coming out of my storage closet. And they would say, you have more problems than you know underneath this building. Because they kept springing a leak. It's old. But I will next time, if you would like, bring my stack of papers and the reports. Because I do have the same. I do, we do have facts. Thank you very much. Hi, good evening, Diana Sarver, BEA president. I'm here to speak on behalf of all of our teachers in attendance tonight and those who could not be here. First of all, maybe you weren't the folks that hired us, but those who came before you saw us as the best and the brightest in the county. And you brought us on. And we bring our professional opinion here. Our professional opinion is not brought to you simply to say, let us be in the same building. 
Our professional opinions are being brought to you because we care about kids, because we care about where we are and what we do, and we are bringing you the most important opinions that we can about what's safe for our kids and what's safe for our staff. We would be neglectful to not bring you that information. Maybe some of us don't live in this district, but we still have a vested interest here. And I can't look out here and see one person that's not committed to this district. And I can't look at one person that I work with and think that any of them would walk away because they've been told, if you don't like it here, leave. We're your paid professionals, and our opinions are our professional opinions. When you vote on Northwestern, please put personal differences aside and vote on what's best for this district. Thank you. Hi guys, I'm Dave Kinane from Eden Valley. I just first want to start off to say thank you guys for your dedication of service for the community and for the district. Because I know you guys hear a lot of complaints from everybody, but um, one of the things I do want to say is I want you guys to think about the future of where we're at, not the past. I understand all the, a lot of the medical issues, a lot of the problems with the building. It's just been old, dilapidated through the years. It should have been maintained, but unfortunately it wasn't. So now, being a board member, it's a problem that you guys are here today. But if you guys, everybody here wouldn't mind, if you are an employee for Blackhawk, teacher, doesn't matter what you are, can you stand up for me for a second, please? Just so I can see all the people here. Okay, I just want you guys to take a look at everybody standing up in this room right here. Because one of my big concerns with Northwestern is what would happen if we say, hey, let's do it, and it turns into an issue such as like hiring, and we run into huge deficits. Every person that stood up here today could possibly, in the future, have maybe an issue with the job, say, hey, you know, we can't pay the teachers, we have to do furloughs, we have to do cuts, we have to do budgets. Is that something that we really want to take into consideration now? Because, again, the decision that you guys make is going to affect every single person who stood up in this room that you're going to look at. And just so you guys know that whatever decision you make as a district, my wife, myself, my daughter, my family, we support you because that's the district that we live in. But the decision you make will affect every person that just stood up there in front of you. So that's something I really want you to take seriously into consideration because you know you hear it all the time that the debacle that happened at Highland, how much money we spent, we spent well over, well under, all the issues that came up. Again, anytime you run into a huge construction project, that's something you have to have the ability to take. And also, another food for thought too, once we take these bonds, we start refining. The reality of it is when you refi, what does that mean? Typically, yeah, you may save a little bit, but you're pushing the money off because that means you don't have all the money to pay. That's typically why you're refi, and maybe make it a little bit shorter, but maybe stay your term a little bit longer. That's usually what happens. So if we're in such a position to where we have to rob Peter to pay Paul, why do something? Just consider getting rid of it, do what seems to be the best interest for everybody, because that's my big concern that we're going to go ahead and go with the project, but then the problem is we won't be able to have the back to finish the project. So, thank you again, thank you for your time. Thank you. Hi, I'm Rachel Klein from Chippewa Township, and I will be on the ballot for a seat on the school board in Region 1 in November. Uh, as much as it's emotional and difficult to hear the struggles that our staff and children had during the last few years that Northwestern was open, and it is difficult to hear all of that, there are other compelling reasons to eliminate that building from our footprint. In fact, the only arguments that I've heard for the building to remain open, to me, seem largely based on nostalgia. And I understand that. My dad and my aunts all went to Northwestern. We lost my dad tragically about three years ago, and every time I think of that building, I think of him there. So I understand the nostalgia part of that. There have been one or two parents that maybe have come to the meetings that have spoken that they have uh, concerns regarding the length of time their children might be on the bus if Northwestern closes, but I think that that can be addressed. Um, 
In the course of my candidacy, I've had the opportunity to talk to many people about this building, and I've tried very hard to focus on residents, uh, particularly parents, who reside in South Beaver, Darlington, and Enon. And I have to say that some of you on the board, and some of you who are more vocal in our community, are not giving the parents in this area enough credit. I have found these parents to be most concerned with the quality of education that their children will receive and not the location of the building. Times are different than they were 30 years ago. The way we travel is faster and safer than ever. Families travel further for educational opportunities for their children. We have travel sports teams. Parents drive their children distances for music, acting, and art lessons. We have day camps all throughout the summer where many of us are taking our children from the Black Hawk District to CCBC or Penn State Beaver for wonderful programs. And of course, we have our high school students who travel to these campuses daily to take college level courses. To say that our Black Hawk parents place a high priority on having neighborhood schools is probably a stretch. You have the perfect opportunity right now to make a decision that is going to give you the easiest course from a PR perspective and ultimately a financial one. And not the least of the great benefits is that consolidating our footprint will make our schools safer and will provide greater opportunities uh, educationally for our children. I honestly cannot understand how any of you could be on the fence about this at this point, and maybe you aren't anymore. But if you are, I do think when the opportunity presents itself, it would be good for the public to hear your reasons. Thank you. South Beaver Township. Um, I have a seven-year-old first grader who attends Northwestern at Biz. My husband was diagnosed at 37 years old with stage four colon cancer. Now how does that affect what we're talking about this evening? Um, in many ways, not closing Northwestern at Biz would rip my family apart. Um, my husband, as it is, cannot be exposed to large groups of people, um, germs, etc., uh, because it is a health factor for him. Um, being diagnosed with stage four cancer at such a young age is something that we cannot um, ever, or I'm sorry, we could have not prevented. Um, it is not something that runs in his family. Um, but subjecting our children to go to a building that would make them sick and the unknown health risks, um, we can control that. Um, as a Black Hawk High School class of 2000 graduate myself, I know that the district expects excellence, um, whether it's music, academics, sports. Um, there are even more opportunities now than what were available to me almost 20 years ago. Um, how our students and their teachers are expected to perform optimally whenever they report to a building daily that is jeopardizing their health. Um, I think we need to take a hard look at that. Um, our children and their teachers, by the way, who in my, my opinion, deserve the highest regard and respect for what they do, um, should, should not have to think about that whenever they you know, attend school every day or, or walk into work. So, um, like many that have spoke before me this evening, um, there are facts specifically. Um, if you look um, within the DEP, there are uh, certain reports that do speak about the uh, lead that is present in the school. Um, Flint, Michigan is making national news um, even still. And I, I can't understand how that would be acceptable in a, in a place and in a community such as Black Rock School, School District. So thank you for um, the time and listening to my remarks and have a good evening. Thank you.
Dean Fleischman, Chippewa Township. Um, on another topic, which was the previous refinancing, I want to make sure that we're clear on something. Those letters, never saw them. Now, Kathy, you said you never saw them, and Bonnie never saw them, and Perry never saw them. Doug, you were there. Did you ever see the letters? I mean, Dean, you're asking me for something that occurred three years ago. I mean, I can't. Doug, you don't. Come on, that's not. You can't say that you don't. I mean, you're a sharp guy, and one of the sharpest guys I know. You either saw the letters or you didn't. I, I mean, honestly, if, if I knew with 100% certainty, you know, I would say it. But I knew during that time. There were opportunities, there were discussions, and things just right. never progressed. Right. So, and I... Because Eric was told not to move forward, which becomes sense. more complicated by the very fact that at the time, Rob was not our superintendent. He was our acting superintendent, and thus had no authority to indicate. In fact, I would argue that Eric had greater authority as an employee of the district. Eric was told to stand down, not to move forward, and that's the reality, and that's the truth. And that's something that needs to be understood, because that's what cost us all that money. Because certainly, you have no doubt that if I had seen the letters, there have been a whole lot more questions about why aren't we moving forward. Because, God, we have those discussions, and it costs us a lot of money. And it may merit a request for an investigation on the state level. Because when an existing board is not given the information that it needs, and when they have already taken the step, as we did with Anthony Ditka, and telling him we did the vote, and we confirmed with Anthony, did we do everything the board was asked to do? And the answer was yes. So the fact that we didn't move forward and the fact that that went to another individual who had a previous association with the superintendent. And Rob, you can take tape all you want. That's fine, because it's ridiculous. But that's all right. Your father's watching you, and that's what you need to understand. No, 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 that's important, because he swore on his father's soul before he was hired. And you know, because there was another superintendent that you and I wanted, and we didn't get our option, they didn't want that person to find. But we never got the letters, he didn't have the authority, and it cost this district a lot of money. So Rob, I hope you have an explanation at some point, because you have some explaining to do. Thank you. Thank you. There's, okay, so, and again, this, this is my, my take and, and from what I've seen and with timelines. Back in, well, back in June, July of, I'm not even sure of the year, 17, 16? 2016, Doug. 2016. Mm -hmm. I believe at that time, Piper Jaffrey was our bond uh, company, or representative. I'm not sure of the exact terminology. All the information that we got from them said that we were not able to refinance our bonds until November or December. Then, when Dr. Pashupak came onto the board, he had a relationship with Ben Benning and Scatterby in May. Yes. And I they, the board in May. They came to us and May said, no, actually. your your bond representative is incorrect. You can do this. But all the letters that we got from them indicated that we could not. So because of that, this is, again, this is my opinion, because of that confusion and the timeline stretching out, you know, we delayed the refinancing until I believe it was the end of October that year. Interest rates had gone up a little bit. And when we started off in that May-June time frame, we believed that we could refinance and we would see savings of somewhere between 
800,000 to possibly a million dollars. When everything was delayed, and then we finally did the refinancing, we realized the savings of 200 plus thousand dollars. So, and that's where we're at. So, and again, in my opinion, the, you know, interest rates move. We can't predict what they'll do, what they won't do. And in fact, if you were at the meeting last month, when we did the refinancing, obviously there was some, you know, healthy discussion between the board members on whether or not we should actually refinance or wait. Um, but, and I lost my train of thought on where I was going with that. Refinancing made two point three million. No, we did that, but I mean, at the end of the day, we did. Oh, we, you know, we realized, you know, over two hundred thousand in savings instead of eight. We lost the opportunity for that. We didn't actually lose money from the school district's, you know, bank account. So that's that's kind of, you know, again, that's my explanation, my opinion on the timeline and the information that that I saw. Good evening. My name is Barb Brown, and I've been here several times before. I live in Chippewa Township. I work in the Blackhawk School District. I've worked at Northwestern, Patterson, Highland, and now Biz. Tonight, I'd like to speak to you and remind you about some of the think numerous reasons Northwestern should be closed. There are a lot of budget conscious reasons. We really don't need the space right now, and we're not projected to grow much in the next decade. It's costly to maintain. It'll be expensive to renovate. The location is very remote. We will not have equal services for students. We don't have staff to work there. And I don't mean staff that don't want to work there. We physically do not have enough staff to run Northwestern. The projected cost of staffing Northwestern is over $500,000 in year one. That won't get cheaper in year two. There are health conscious reasons that many people have discussed tonight because the building is known to have mold and water, asbestos, radon, ventilation, sewage, electrical, and probably more issues than I can stand here and list. Not to mention both adults and children that have worked or attended school there have, have had numerous health issues that run the gamut from rashes and headaches to cancer. Tonight, I want you to think about who is most affected by the decisions you will make about Northwestern, the students. The children that attend school in that building are five, six, and seven years old. We send our babies to Northwestern. They trust that adults will do what is best for them. They are babies when they are five, and six, and seven. Would you send your babies there? I know I won't send any more of mine. My personal children that live in the district purposely do not live on the Northwestern side of the district. Think about that. After working in that building, my children all attended school in that building. Two of my own children working in that building, one as a teacher. We made the conscious decision for them not to live on the northwestern side of the district. Please stand if you believe this district must close northwestern now. A little something to think about. Our school-wide positive behavior plan includes a picture of a paw print. That paw print, with that paw print, students are reminded every day that they must do their part. P is for persevere, A is to be accountable, R is to be respectful, and T is to be trustworthy. The time has come for you to do your part. We respectfully request that the closing of Northwestern be placed on the October 8th and 15th agenda. We especially respectfully request that a motion be made and voted on to close Northwestern and that it be taken at the October 15th school board meeting. Thank you for your time. Any other visitors tonight? Can I just make one comment? Bear with me, folks, all right? Yeah, this will be the last thing I'll ever say about this. I'm lucky. My kids went through Northwestern. Nobody got sick. 
we wouldn't be we wouldn't be sitting here talking about this if the board had done their job. Eight hundred and fifty thousand dollars or eight eight and a half million dollar bond was in twenty fifteen would have made that a brand new school. With Eccles have a book this thick on how to fix that school. And what happened to the eight and a half million? Two and a half went to two and a half million went to the stadium. Three million went to buy out a train contract that still required trained people to do the work. Uh, and two million went to the high school roof. There's a there's a million dollars left out there that was supposed to be spent on on Northwestern. It never was. And we wouldn't be here talking about this if in 2015 they had done the work, done everything. Eccles had everything taken care of. Water, everything was addressed. Would have made a brand new school out of that place. Didn't happen. Money was spent somewhere else. Thank you. Good evening, my name is Melanie Tottridge. You've heard from me before. I know there were a lot of other teachers that were here before then, but obviously not even come tonight. A lot of questions still remain, and as Mrs. Brown has beat into our heads and several of the other uh, individuals about cancers of people dying, what types of cancers are they? As Dr. Markozik has picked up, you cannot blame all cancers on what might have been at Northwestern. Any due to hereditary, any due to skin cancers. Smokers, you know they're out there. There's teachers now that are smokers. Any related to chemicals, chemicals they might have been reused to at their homes. You never know. You know, I work in medical. I've been in medical for 34 years. I see it on a daily basis. Don't laugh. It's serious. It is. You can't pinpoint something you actually don't know. How about all the flooding that's going on at Biz? I've gone past Biz. I have two grandchildren going to school there right now. When they have to have the restoration man come in and suck out the water that's going into the gymnasium there. Is not mold growing underneath there? You don't know. You guys have no idea where all mold might be, might be polluted at or growing behind walls, growing underneath, in teachers' rooms, anything like that. It can be behind walls, hidden, high temperatures can bring up just about most anything. Also, this um, rayon testing, or have all the schools been tested for rayon recently? Have they always been tested and, and kept track of year after year after year? I've not seen anything I went researching. I also went researching. Patterson was built in 69. Highland was built in 57, remodeled in 2013. Bisbet was built in 1939. 1939, that was a long time ago. I remember my daughter was playing softball for Chuck Dane Gore. At that time, Biz was closed. It was condemned. It was closed. We were allowed to use the gymnasium to hold a 21 family garage sale. It was appalling what we went into and we had to straighten up in order to be able to do that. They allowed us and permitted us to have. We did that for five years. After that five years, I'm not sure when it was remodeled and brought up to date, but there was a lot of money that was dumped into that school to bring that up, only to go through Mr. Eccles to find out that it's not the best ideal place. It isn't in any way, shape, and form. I tutor there now with a little Beaver Lions Club. I go there on a weekly basis, have been doing it, and I also did it at Northwestern for 15 years. I have an aunt and a uh, aunt through marriage that have worked in Northwestern for 30, 35 years in the cafeteria. No signs of cancer there with any of them. You can't pinpoint that. Northwestern was built in 1955. 
So you look at Northwestern in 55, Highland in 57, Biz in 39. You know, you talk about having things assessed for evaluation. When you're doing this, assess your property values, find out what's your best way to go. I just, I don't understand where all you're going, honestly. I'd like to know how many lead pipes are coming into the schools. You have no clue about it, neither do we. More importantly, the Beaver Falls Water Authority would have the knowledge of that. So, has any of those been replaced? Has the water been checked at each location? And if so, how often have, is it checked? Do you have a way to handle the city water if it's polluted and bad? Is there any plans on that? Has it ever been checked and ever come up with high pollutants in it? I know my well at home, I have my well water checked about every two years. Dillon Well Drilling comes and checks it. I have no problems with it. Um, ambulance service. Now let's think about this. An ambulance service trying to get to Northwestern from, we got Northwest Ambulance Service. We also have Medic Rescue. You go straight down 51 off onto 168 and for three turns, four turns, you're there. You try to go through from Chippewa to Highland Middle School on that two-lane highway at any given time after a soccer game, during school, going to school, when buses are coming up, or you try to get the bids, or you try to get the Blackhawk. You got bottleneck after bottleneck after bottleneck. You consider Northwestern rural. What do you consider this high school? This high school is rural also. So if anybody wants to stop and think about it, I think you need to think a lot of ways around. Wi-Fi wi service can be put into Northwestern without a doubt. When money is being spent to update, you're going to update all the way around. You're just not going to update certain things and leave the rest go. It's the only school that has a full gymnasium other than our high school here. It's the only school that has a full football field that was, a, was completely outfitted until bleachers were taken away from it. You know, you think about it, that's, that's very rich for us to have. And I guarantee if Mr. Miller or Mr. Hamilton was still here, these hearings would not be happening. These discussions would not be happening because those are backbone foundations. When you see that roster outside when you drive in this, this uh, facility here, of all those records, they occurred when they were here. Since they haven't been here, now we're doing away with different facilities. Oh, I see those records not going to be expanding anytime soon. We talked about CAC. The CAC, there are several members, you wonder if it is an excuse too, because several members when are sitting on the school board right now were, are on that committee. So good. Oh, I'm sure they are. So how, how have you twisted any of those results? Makes you wonder. This is another one thing I want to also, I want researching. There are pensions. All these teachers pay 7.5% into their teacher, into their salaries, or into their pensions, excuse me. On a yearly basis, the amount of pension funding that has to come out is more than what is being put in on an average yearly basis. So now this year we're gonna have, or next year have taxes going up and it's better stress on the families because we're taking out these, these grants and we're, we're doing this remodeling and addition and so on and so forth. So that's gonna be more money coming out of the school district, which is more money out of the taxpayers who support that. So we're doing it now first, supposedly for this remodeling, addition, whatever you want to call it. So then how many years down the road, when the nucleus of all these teachers go to start retiring, how much pressure are you going to put on the public at that point in time? You don't have it. They don't have it. Our grandchildren, their grandchildren, are going to be paying for this. It's not right. It's not right at all. You need to think about more than just what is on the table right now. Um, 
We talked about cyber school. Mr. Postapak said last meeting that $1 million a year Blackhawk puts out for cyber schooling. My daughters um, went to school here in the 90s and my son also. There was no money put out for cyber school then. I guess cyber school didn't exist then. But yes, I said that. And bullying is occurring to this day. I had a granddaughter last year being bullied. I have a grandson this year being bullied. Thank you to Mr. T, who happened to put a squelch on my grandson being bullied. My grandson is a very tall young man who, who is very kind-hearted, but yet again, he's very big for his size. He has no control over it. I think bullying with a lot of the cyber schooling going on is because of bullying. You have bigger issues you need to take care of than to worry about putting new schools in. As we know, the population is going down in our students. From when my kids went in, they had graduating classes of 230 to 250. Right now, second grade, I figured out that my granddaughter's in might make 140 or 150. That's a hell of a drop, 75 to 100 students. You need to think about how you're taxing your citizens, your public, because our children, our grandchildren, their children, they aren't gonna be around to handle it. And I don't know if everybody seems to think your jobs are secure, they aren't. You can be asked any day, any given time. Thank you. to go down to one building because you mentioned three different schools that have various problems, uh, various problems with, uh, with our population dropping for the, the student body. Those are arguments to go to one building. So that's the only thing I would say. About that.
except when I subbed at Northwestern. These are just personal facts that I have seen through my family and what I have experienced and knowing everything else that I am hearing from the reports, I plead. And I'm not saying this because I get nothing from the district or pensions or anything like that because I am a sub. Please close Northwestern. Thank you. some background. I'm going to have a proposal at the end that I think meets both sides of the aisle. Uh, first of all, I've been in practice 34 years. I had two practices. Uh, a little over a year ago, I sold one of them, commercial property. To say, to make it a simplification that you're just going to close Northwestern and forget about it, it's, not, it's just not going to happen. Uh, suppose, for argument's sake, you go to sell that property. Commercial property, someone's going to come up, and you are going to have to pass inspections for your wiring, your heating and ventilation, they're going to touch your water, they're just going to give it the whole runaround, because I have to go through it. So, to, to make the statement that, hey, just close it and forget about it, that's just not going to happen. Secondly, I have a problem closing it with the fact that we're going to walk away from 1.5 million in plan fund money. That's, that's your money, taxpayer money. And I just can't throw that down the drain. Um, also, I asked for attendance records for the last year that all the buildings were open. The sickest building is right here in this high school. There's 783 absentees. Northwestern had, Northwestern combined with Patterson had 548. Between Viz and uh, Highlands, like 537 and 545. So there's negligible between Viz, uh, Northwestern Patterson, and Highland. High school here had 783. As far as the headaches are concerned, I hear you, but I've also heard enough stories from enough people that it wasn't a building, it was a road employee. Someone took a fired up the diesel tractor inside an enclosed garage out of Northwestern, fumes by the ventilation. Of course you're going to have headaches from it. Regarding the cancer, I've been in practice, like I said, 34 years. I see maybe three or four suspicious lesions a year. Before you, regardless of what I feel it looks like, before you make that diagnosis, you have to take a biopsy. You look at it underneath the microscope. That diagnosis is made at the cellular level. Amazingly, in those 34 years, I, like I said, I probably have three to four years, so there's well over 120 that I have had suspicious lesions. Out of those, I have maybe eight malignancies. Amazingly, there's a teacher here who claims there's 25 of them out there, so I would love to hear uh, her biopsy reports. Basically, there's something called basal cell layer, which separates the epiderm from the endoderm. When you have a malignancy, the nuclei within an individual cell greatly expand. They basically eat up the space within the cell. Sometimes it's like two nuclei within a single cell. To make a diagnosis of a malignancy, that has to spread and break through that, quote, basal layer. So I would love to see those biopsies. If you've got 25 cancers, then they should all be the same. Uh, one lady here, I believe it's this lady down here in front, who uh, contracted influenza. Okay, I buy that. But that's also, it's, that's a virus. The virus is mutated. I would like to know, if, uh, we, have, we have someone here who claims they're a nurse. I would like to know if you're taking cultures from all these sick people. That's the only way you're going to prove 
that the building was sitting. How the heck do you know whether you're not catching these the spires from someone else? And influenza is a communicable disease. So we send people back to get sick again so we can test. Wait, what's that? I, can't. I said, are we going to send people back to the school so we can take cultures? To well, you're, gonna come, you're coming here and you're ready to have to play And you haven't proved anything. My kids haven't been in the school. I didn't say that. school. But there's people coming here. Okay, I'm going to see the proof. I'm going to see justifiable medical proof. If you're a medical professional, then I think you also understand that these families have a right to a HIPAA law, but they don't have to That's provide you with anything. That's right. If you're going to make an accusation, you're going to make an accusation. It's going to be medically sound. We have we have our uh, directors here. A year ago, myself and Mrs. Battaglia specifically asked them. You can look at the video from March of 2018. We asked them specifically about Northwest, and he gave us basically a clean bill of health. Basically, stated it was he gave us the best, but best bang for the buck. Regardless, all right, regardless. <laughs> yeah, let me speak. Yeah, we're really, tell me how many biopsies you've been performed in the last oh, no. 30, 40 years. Listen, yeah, let's just keep this health. civil. The board members were not arguing with everybody when you guys were speaking, so please give the board members the same courtesy that we had given to you. All right, all I'm asking is, okay, let's, have, let's test all the buildings. If indeed there are viruses running around in Northwestern, then that changes things. If the air is unhealthy, that changes things. That's the law. Let's, let's see where we stand. You know, regarding like the leather pipes, as I understand it, these were old cast iron pipes. It's like God. You didn't have water moving for several years. Of course it's not going to pass. So I'd like to see what the truth is. Not just make innuendo because you have a personal bias one way or the other. I will say this: we do not have the money for any construction project at this moment. So I'll rest my case. I feel for all you people that are here that have had illnesses in your family. I do. My children both went there all through school. They never had an issue. Whether they were healthy or not, I thank God. But that was then, and we are now. We've had test after test after test. From 2015, when Edwards did the first study, to 2018, we did the CAC study. Since then, there's been tests on everything in that building. What you people do not understand is when they do a makeover of the building. Everything that you people have talked about, that the, the mold, the asbestos, uh, the air conditioning, if you look at what was presented to us in both studies, basically that building will be completely redone. New plumbing, where your water comes from, the wells, the heating, your air conditioning, the asbestos abatement, which encompasses taking the asbestos out of that building. There's buildings all across the tri-state area that you have been in and go in every day that at one point in time they had asbestos and those buildings were abated and there's people going in and out of them now and you can't say that that building because it had issues 30 years ago that when you do a makeover, you're going to have that issue today. That is the whole idea of redoing the building. That was set in 2015 and 2018. All that stuff would be ramified, taken care of. Now, what I don't understand is Mr. Esposito, we disapproved him for another thing. His company is very uh, educated and knowledgeable of these tests, and his, he was involved with these tests and so forth that were done 15 and now. And he can speak on that as far as they have all passed, other than the water issue that we've had recently. Now, once everything is redone, we will not have this issue. And for the fact, like Mr. Bacosi said, 
as far as the plan con money we are going to lose. And you people keep forgetting, right now, we have still a bond on that building out there. You can do whatever you want with it, but guess what? The taxpayers are still going to pay that 1.2 or 1.4 million is still owed on that bond. So between the 1.2 and 1.4 million, plus the 1.2 million of plan con, there's 240 some million dollars you're going to throw away. If that's what you want to do, fine. But listen to Mr. Esposito, and he will explain to us what what the test proved, and then make a, make a decision. <coughs> Mr. Esposito, let him finish it. Can he give his thing? Um, I would say that Eccles Architecture did not perform any test on the building. They subcontracted that test to a company called PSI, I believe. Yes. PSI test results are on the CAC website. I believe the former results and the current results are all available on there. I don't know that Eccles Architecture could speak to the results because they're not experts in that field. Well, but they did. We had their company provide the service to get the experts to test it, and then the results are published. I remember at the previous meeting, Dr. Fochabak, you made the comment that you would not put another child in that building or anything of that nature until that building, all the tests were made and they were all positive. And they were all, came back and they were all positive. So now what is the issue if we're going to, we can do the makeover, why would we not have a, a perfectly sound building? And it's a lot more than 1939. I don't know what you want me to answer. What My question answer? was, did you not say that at, at pre previous meetings? That you you have a decision to make October 8th or 15th on whether you will remain uh, a course to use Northwestern as part of your educational programming, or you will shut that building down and not expend any more funds in that portion of your footprint. That's a decision <coughs> that this board has to make. I don't make that decision. No, no, I didn't say that. I asked a question to you. Was that not one of the things you said when we were doing this testing? You would not. You want a professional anything? comment from me? Yes, sir. My professional comment is if that building made one person sick and you put people back in it, shame on all of us, and I should never make that recommendation. That's <laughs> I know that there's human fecal matter in the football field. It was shut down for that reason. It wasn't bear, it wasn't deer, read the report. It was in the newspaper. There's not one school district that we play that will play on that football field. The WPI would not let a team report that. They will not report to that field. If we knew that an opposing team had a field that had fecal matter in the core samples, we would say we will not play on that football field. I never said anything about the football field. I well, that's to... part of the school. That's part of the ground. If you are going to expend anywhere from 15 plus million dollars, all you're going to do is repair the fractured infrastructure. You will not improve education in the school district. But you will spend 15 million dollars in repairing a fractured situation that currently we do not use, that is not required, and we are not spending any more than 70 plus thousand a year to maintain it. Your decision is, do you want to spend 15 million on a building we don't need, and the taxpayers don't need to pay for, and you do nothing and determine when your finances are going to be in check? Look back when I was hired, May 30th, 31st, 2016, I was introduced to the board. Please look at the minutes. I had three goals. Goal one, get your finances in order. You had $200,000 in your fund balance. Goal two, get the kids moved out of Northwestern because they had closed it due to a lot of community concerns. Goal three, look at refunding your current debt. You can make money. 
For anyone to say that something was withheld is ridiculous. There is email after email that says you better refund. In fact, they were talking about refunding before I arrived in March of 2016. All I did was offer opportunity that continued to get pushed down the road for other personal agendas. I fought through that. They made 200 plus thousand. The current refinancing made 2.32 million. They currently have 4.6 million in fund balances. <laughs> this year they're going to make another 1 million estimated, plus the 2.3. If my job was to improve the finances to 7 million from 200,000 in four years, I'm okay with my job. because they have personal agendas. The private meetings that go on in this school district that none of you know about are appalling. The PSBA would be appalled at. Yes. I'm not going to do that. And it's still going on. And if it costs me my job, so be it. Don't dump another dime in a building you don't use. You're wasting money. You don't need it. Stay where you are and don't spend any money. That'd be like you buying another home that you don't need. My professional opinion, don't spend any money. I don't care what the test shows. Don't care. Don't spend money. Everybody says they want to get their finances in order. Get them in order. That's my job. I shouldn't have said that. I'm sorry. I apologize. That was unprofessional. I apologize. Uh, thank you, Dr. Foster. Um, I'm just going to say this right now, is I was not in support of Dr. Pasekat coming on board. Well, I was not on board. <laughs> yes. Um, since I've gotten to know him, since I have worked with him, I am convinced that this district, he definitely will do good things. He has done good things. He would not do anything intentionally to harm the district. That just seems silly. My job is to make sure you got a good school district. You, look, the teachers aren't going to like this. You have less teachers than when I got here. You know. Yeah. Yes, you do. You have less teachers. You have a gifted program you didn't have. That's you have true. a technology program you yes. didn't have. You have a better special ed program than when I got here. You have a dyslexia program that all the administrators, not me, they all started. You have a better title <coughs> program. They started it. Absolutely. I just support that. You have a better facility to play your sports in. That's all because they're allowed to do their jobs. My only job is to make sure they have the ability to do theirs. And they do a great job for the school district. Yes, These administrators do. deserve more. <laughs> he does a great job in the office financially. He's the reason we were able to put that money together. I don't do that alone. I have a whole office staff. I have Barb, Nancy, Eric, Missy, Tara. Yes, well, yes, the other thing, I mean, just to, to kind of piggyback off of that is um, the last two budget cycles, even though it has been tough, Dr. Pastor Peck has worked really hard with his administration to make no cuts during the budget. Um, I really think that that speaks volumes. Um, there were several instances where I, as a parent, um, not just a board member, were like, okay, you know, are we going to replace this staff member? Are we going to do this? This would be a time that, you know, possibly a cut could happen. And he replaced people. He has grown, you know, he's dedicated to growing our program. So I really want to thank him for that right off of that. Um, and I don't know if I want to put you on the spot, Mr. Esposito, but I, I did this at one other meeting. Um, the last facility study that was done, would you verify that the main focus was remodel Northwestern or close Northwestern, period? Yes, if, if you wouldn't mind. I, just because I, I wanted to make sure that would have been when, the previous when, board, when and we the focus was on Northwestern only. When we were hired, we were hired with the direction that we were to do a needs assessment of Northwestern. 
Now, a needs assessment is different than a feasibility study. A needs assessment looks at shortcomings and identifies them and then, you know, identifies remedies, estimates costs. Um, when we were, when it became uh, apparent that the Corbett administration was going to institute the, more, the first moratorium on plant gone, there was a deadline set and it made sense to submit a um, Part A to get in before the deadline so that you would be eligible for reimbursement. And that, that vote actually came literally the day before that moratorium was set. Is that correct? That's, there was a special meeting called. It, it was right under the wire. One day. Yes. Thank okay, you. so in order to do that and meet the state's uh, policies and guidelines, that needs assessment had to be converted into a district wide feasibility study. So we did that, we supplied a document that met the guidelines and was compliant with the department and you became eligible for reimbursement for Northwestern. Um, there's a couple of things that have been talked about. I'll take this opportunity while I have the microphone. Yes, thank you. We are not a testing lab. We don't do testing. Uh, the district asked us if we could put together requests for proposal from certified licensed testing labs, and we did that, and the district uh, hired uh, PSI, Professional Service Industries. Uh, they used to be a company by the name of Pittsburgh Testing Lab. They're now a national company. They do tests all over the country. Um, they came and tested a variety of things in that building. Uh, mold, radon, uh, air quality, uh, volatile organic compounds, uh, lead in the drinking water, uh, the wells were tested, um, the soil was tested out in the football field. Those tests were all done by independent licensed testing laboratories and the results, as Dr. Postupak said, are on your website. When I read those uh, reports from those uh, testing that was done, I saw nothing uh, that they found that was, I would say, remarkable or um, there were no red flags in the testing. Uh, everything was within accepted standards. Um, that building, if you choose to save it and reuse it, uh, requires pretty much every system uh, HVAC, plumbing, electrical, uh, the data and communication systems, all those systems need replaced. Uh, there's asbestos in the building, particularly in the pipe tunnels, uh, that should be removed. Uh, floor tile, um, that, all of that's been tested also by a testing laboratory and identified. Um, if all of that was done at whatever cost that would be, um, the issues that might plague that building should be eliminated. Um, short of that, you know, what we know, if, unless there's some mysterious thing that no one knows, uh, but all the experts have tested it and it is tested within normal limits. Uh, the structure's sufficient, the building has sufficient uh, floor area, um, it could be used as a school if that suited your needs for your educational program. That's not, you know, something that we determine, that's something the board will have to determine. Um, but the, the actual physical structure of that building is not compromised. The roof is uh, not brand new, but not old either. Uh, in fact, you're still paying money on it. Um, and, and um, it has other components that need replaced, windows, energy-wise, it's not, it's a 1955 building, it's not modern. Um, and if you spent enough money to upgrade it, you could address all those issues. Um, and it would provide continued use for, for years. Uh, but it would require that those issues be addressed. And that is another decision. Do you want to invest that type of money in that building to use it? 
for that or to upgrade it. So I know it's a tough decision, um, but that's a pretty truthful explanation of what's up with that building. Uh, and it's up to you. The study's identified uh, multiple options beyond reusing Northwestern. And uh, you need to really uh, think about what is going to serve you best going into the future. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. Um, going off of that, so the CAC, I, I just want to um, remind everybody that we actually advertised to the community. Um, our goal was to get members from each of the regions so they could be a part of the committees. And the goal was that every single sitting board member serve on a committee. Um, there were 30 to 40 residents that served on different committees. We met for over nine months. When I talk about Northwestern, if you rewind to a couple years ago, I would have talks with teachers. I was never one of the people that uh, subscribed to it's a sick building. Um, I would say, okay, so what? You don't have air conditioning. Big deal, right? I mean, I worked there too. I mean, I, I was, I said things like that to people. We had discussions. So I went into the CAC with an open mind. I felt like, convince me, you know, why we need to close it or remodel it, etc. I, I had an open mind. Throughout the CAC process, it became very apparent to me that we need to minimize our district footprint for financial costs especially, um, for, for just educationally, the, the, one of the committees I served on was the Pedagogy um, and Learning Committee, and we did a lot of studying on the effects it has to have K through two in one building and K through two in another building and having two completely different educational experiences, um, the shared services that can occur, the um, educational um, meetings that can, ha that can happen between teachers so they can team teach. All of that convinced me without a doubt and is why I made the motion to have the hearings regard the hearing regarding Northwestern. I made that motion at the end of the CAC meeting. I saw the recommendations. I have an idea of what I think the district should do, and I made that motion. Since that time, the letters that I've received, the people that have come to these meetings and told me about their children that were so sick. <coughs> And that when they left that building, they were not sick anymore. Teachers, I, and I do know some of the teachers that have passed away. Maybe their cancers weren't all the same, but to me that does not matter. To anybody I ever said that I don't believe in the sick building thing, that I don't think it's that big of a deal, I apologize. Because now, not only do I think that the building needs to be closed financially because it's the best thing, but I don't ever want to see another kid in that building or teacher that is in this district work there again. All three of my children are there, and I hope to heck none of them ever get some form of cancer that maybe was caused by that building, and we have no idea. I, I don't care what the tests say either. I don't want anybody back in that building. I would like it demolished. Thank you. I was shocked, okay? I went online. I appreciate you sending it to Melissa and Melissa's putting it out. What I discovered, because the last four or so years, we are paying a company to test out water. I'm wondering, were they lying to us? They kept telling us it was okay. Were they lying to us? Well, after speaking with them, I myself did not, someone did. They said, when the DEP comes to test, if they cannot get in the building, you're automatically cited. When I looked at all of those dates, they were all on the same date, many. And that's why 
there were so many. They could not get in to test the water. The man I spoke to said, the water at the well, not in your building. The pipes are old. I have an old house. I know. But at the well itself, that water is probably better than the city water you're drinking right now. But first of all, all secondly, all of you parents that have had children ill in there, I do believe every word you say. And I don't think it's something that happened relatively in the last so many years. I think it started back in the 70s when they moved egg science out of the, to the high school. They used that room for a garage. It should have never been used as a garage. There, there's been many things, not just one tractor. There's been many things, lawnmowers, everything else stored in there, gasoline, paint, and it was in proximity by the hall to the building. And I am, why did it take so long for all this to come out? I think it started a long time ago. And yeah, the school was sadly neglected. That there's just no two ways. My feelings are to do nothing right now. I hate to slam the door shut because we do need to test all the other buildings, especially Biz. I don't care for the Biz building. It's three floors. It's hard. To, if you have to get the children out of there in a hurry, I don't care for that. We did it in less so, than three minutes. Mrs. Gary, may I just respond to what you said about the DEP report? Yes. Okay, so there's a contact person at the local DEP office. Her name is Sheila Schaefer. That's who actually does the testing. I tried to reach out to her this week, um, but she's in Harrisburg. <coughs> so um, after sharing information, um, obviously, I mean, I'm, I'm not a water expert. I have no idea. I'm just good at navigating public records. Um, <laughs> I reached out to her to try and find, to get an explanation for people to bring back and say, you know, yes, and obviously it can be fixed. Well, I think we all know that. But to me, the public notification piece is the, the most alarming part, is all of the, the issues with the lack of public notification, which would make sense if you have a, a, you know, a second or a third party doing your testing and they're not reporting to the district or whomever they're reporting to is not being proactive to alert all of us in the area. I can understand that, but to me, I get that there's going to be lead, I understand that there's issues, but to not properly notify makes me distrust the process. So what makes me believe that if we can do what Mr. Battaglia talked about, if we can completely make this school brand new, how am I going to trust the process? And I think that's where the struggle is for most of us. We're not arguing it's not fixable. We're arguing that we, we don't feel like we can trust the process. But I absolutely have um, a request to Sheila Schaefer at the DEP and see if she can provide further clarification mm -hmm. on us to, you know, is that true, is that accurate? Because she is, in fact, the person that did the physical water testing there. So I'm trying to find more information. I appreciate that, okay. Because, um, GLA. GLA is the company that we were working with for years, and uh, we never doubted them. We had no reason to doubt them. Now, remember, the school has been empty for three years, so whatever happened before that, I don't know who did the testing before we hired the GLA and all the other ones. Uh, if it was employees, okay. And the a person who was the custodian there did it. Jim Merlick had the license to go off of, but Andy seems he's doing the testing. Okay. So, so that would be yes, sense why there was no information past the DEP before 2015, because there's not necessarily. No, I, mean, I, I need to. I need to speak up there. Um, there, there have been numerous violations over the past four years. There have been no students in the building since 2007. <coughs> So no student or adult has ever been exposed to any waters. Uh, there are signs posted at every week. We toured the building within the last week. There are signs posted at any area that potable water could be obtained. And prior to my coming here, they have all been removed by the company now. The students were drinking out of polar type of water 
they were not drinking the water out of the building. So for the past at least four years, no student or adult has been exposed to any of the water for consumption in that building. What we have been trying to do is maintain the water permit so that the district could make a decision. Maintaining the water permit has turned into numerous violations requiring us to turn the permit into the seasonal permit that we now have. So the water will be turned off and drained, the entire system cleaned, by the end of October. And then that will not be returned back on until at some time in late March, April. Uh, Mr. Fleshman has been here two years, there, Two years, and, and he has been working closely with Sheila. There's been meetings with our attorneys and Darren in Pittsburgh to maintain this permit. We, we literally have dumped tens of thousands of dollars into the system to get to this point today. So I just want to make it clear to everyone, there have been dozens of lead and other particulate violations, but at no time was any student or adult ever exposed to drinking that because the building has remained empty and not used for any educational programming at all. So I, I do want to make that clear. We've been maintaining a permit, not trying to use the water as actual consumption. And, and, and Sheila's been great to work with. She's, she's done a good job, but look, the DEP is the DEP. And uh, we have to post. Um, if there's anybody on the property, we have to notify them. So we do that. If you go to the building front entrance, you see the postings. So they are there. It's just nobody goes there. Yes. Can you just clarify that none of these violations were received? I've only been here since it's been closed. I don't know what happened prior to May of 2016. <coughs> but I do know prior to May of 16, the students were not drinking out of that water, nor were they using it, I believe. They had brought in another company to provide water at the sources for student consumption, and I'm assuming that was cafeteria. Can I just, can I just ask, Fred, did you find contamination prior to the building being closed? The most recent report that I saw in 2015, and someone can correct me if I'm wrong, because I did not memorize the test. Correct. But it was, there was issues with um, failure to test, which I would imagine is what that would have been prior, say. but that also would have been why I believe they they put the water systems in for student consumption because they were having issues with that system. Okay. And, and everybody knows old pipes, old solder, pipes deteriorate, particulates float, the sinks won't work, they're not filtered, and the filters that are in them to get the water out get clogged. So the district was proactive in putting in other potable water so that it was safe for all students. Now that was prior to me getting here, those were in when I got here. So that had been going on for a period of time. So any violation that was in the 15-16 school year moving on, they were addressing that as a district. And, and, and the people were aware of it. But the last four years, like I'm saying, nobody's been there anyway. And it has been posted and notified. And, I, and I'm sure Sheila will work with you. Yes. I just would like to say that I worked in that building in the cafeteria okay. when those filters were put in. Right. We did not use those filter waters to cook that to the children's food. Okay. I, so like I said, I wasn't here. I don't know, I but I do know that, that they had it in. I don't know how it was managed, but they were being proactive with that, um, at least at that time, because they understood there were violations. So I do know that. And I know you weren't here before, but no one told me working in there. Right. That cleaning and making pots of pasta with that water that I fed my own children had lead in it. So I gave I, my kids lead yeah, I can't speak to that, unfortunately. But I, I can because I did it. And I lived with that. Right. Thank you yeah. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. I, I just don't want people to leave with the idea that we're using that building to, for water supply. We are not. So I just want people to be aware that we're trying to maintain a permit at this point only. Any, so, other, any other school directors? I have a comment I've got to mention it before. Uh, I've had people in my district that would like, if it's possible, to take a, a walk around inside Northwestern because they're concerned. I mean, they're, they want the school open, but they would like to see how bad it is. I, I can report. I, I, you know what? I'm, I'm glad that question came up. 
Uh, myself, along with all the administration and Mr. Fleshman, we walked the building last Friday. Last Friday. I am pleased to report that other than being closed up all summer long, um, I found it to be in the same condition, and in fact better, because Darren has spent some time <coughs> with his staff. The halls were all cleaned out, everything was stacked cleanly, there was no trash in the building, there was no evidence of things falling apart, ceilings falling down. It looked like it needed a summer cleaning to be prepared. I, look, I'm not going to sit here and lie and say that it's a disaster in there, it's not. I mean, we walked through the building and we were pleasantly surprised that it wasn't, I thought it would be much warmer last Friday morning, it was not, the, and it has been closed up all summer. What about the gym floor? The gym floor was fine. No warping, the locker rooms were fine. So I just want to say, you know, I don't want to paint a picture, there's not, you know, things growing in corners and we have all this stuff. I, now, did we get up in the ceilings? No. Did we get down into the basement? No. The boiler doesn't work, it's been down for years. I, you know, that we didn't get into the bones of that, but just the physical walking through. Like, there's carpeting in the um, office. It wasn't like it stunk so bad we couldn't breathe in there. So, you know, it, we did walk through because we knew that we wanted to be able to give an, an accurate opinion of what it currently sits like. And it does sit that way. I'm sorry, sir. I guess uh, one question. Maybe two. I started the bulldozer. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> Number one, I was here before when I said use the D9 holder, right? Yes, you were. Okay, I've got a question. Do we need the school? No, you currently have not okay. had for you. All right, school that's it. That, 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 yeah, it's almost my bedtime. I know. <laughs> Actually, mine too, sir. Number two, do we have $20 million to spend on that school? No. no. Nobody has $20 million to spend on anything, just to spend. Then why are we wasting all this time? I just said that. out of there. They'll fill this auditorium in every place they can. You know what you this do. is not that good. You know what you ought to do? Put six classrooms at the middle school. Put a gymnasium. Close biz down there. Close matters. Put everything right here. You've got a baseball field that you do nothing with. Build a new school there. Yes. We need you in the CAC, sir. <laughs> All right, the other school directors. Yeah, I have one other thing. Okay. Yes. To change the subject, can I? Darren, how's the truck business coming along? Oh, very, very fine. Thank very you. Fine. Okay. Is it red? It's red. We want to be able to plow snow. <laughs> we were going to have black box signs on it. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Will it get to sit in the garage? I try to leave nothing outside. You can see that when you drive by the shop that virtually okay. nothing. I just only see those yeah. two vans. Yeah, I, Way back. Whatever's oldest will sit outside if I don't have room. When do we get it? Okay. Okay. That's a okay. deal. Okay. It's all right. That so doesn't even help me here. Whatever's oldest will sit outside if I don't have room to have everything inside. So I've got some old equipment that the weather's not going to beat it to death any further than it's already been beat to death. So uh, the newest equipment obviously will be inside. Thank you. When do we okay. do it there? When is it going to be delivered? I don't have a date. Uh, I've been in contact uh, with the uh, guy from Wilson with Ford and uh, he hasn't uh, given me a date. It's at the uh, outfitter. It's being, it's being outfitted right now. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Any other school directors? Oh, wait. Maybe I shouldn't bring this up. Are we going to advertise for a new business manager? 
in some way in the future? That will be discussed in the <coughs> session of personnel matters. Thank yes. you. Yep. <laughs> we didn't be allowed to take a look through the school then, uh, Rob, or no? Make a public At this point, I would suggest we do not visit the school because it's really closed educational programming and things like that. If you want to contact Darren's office, and I, I, at this point, the board makes the decision. If the board would like to visit the school, I think that's an excellent idea. But I don't know the community members visiting the school to come up front and, and make comments one way or the other is going to be a productive situation. If the board makes the decision and the board wishes to visit, certainly they should contact Darren and make a convenient time for as many that can be there at that time. Yes. I'd like to make a motion at this time. At least the whole board and administration, well, the one administrator already did. But I think the whole board should. You don't need a motion. You can do that. Yeah, he's saying just um, contact Darren. Just contact Darren. He will make an appointment for you to visit the school. Uh, what I'm asking is Darren will send you all an email saying, here's some opportunities, some times that seem convenient. I would hate to have him make nine different visits if we can group people together. It's just easy. So, yeah, please. Darren, could you coordinate a visit for the board? Send an email maybe tomorrow okay. asking what availability they have. In fact, Missy, maybe you could do a doodle for that. Mm -hmm. Missy's somewhere in the audience. She's back there. Okay. Oh. There she is. <laughs> could we doodle that tomorrow to the board, please? Thank you. You look like the one pitch fan at Beaver Stadium. I'm a pit guy, so I can make <laughs> <laughs> All right, any other school directors? All right, our next meeting will be on October 8th, 2019, right here at the high school auditorium at 7 p.m. Can I have a motion to adjourn? Thank you, Ms. Morrison. Second, Mr. Jones. All in favor? We are adjourned.